Hey, Chris Sider here, and today I'm gonna teach you how to destroy your ex's rebound relationship. But first, if you're new to this process and you're wanting to get your ex back, I would always recommend that you stop by our website and take our ex recovery chances quiz. It's a simple two minute quiz designed to help you understand if this is worth your time or even if you have a chance of getting your ex back. Taking the quiz is super simple. All you have to simply do is look in the description link below this YouTube video. You click on that and it will take you right to where you can take the quiz. So with that in mind, take the quiz again. Let's begin. How do you destroy your ex's rebound relationship? It's an interesting question and one that's not for the faint of heart. In fact, I would say what I'm about to unveil to you today is going to be highly controversial and certainly not within certain people's morals. So if you're kind of very moralistic about how you approach your life and you want to stay on the right side of the tracks, this video may not be for you. Now, with that being said, I believe it's my duty to show you what works and what doesn't work. And unfortunately, what I'm about to show you today works and it works extremely well. In fact, it works so well that I'm gonna provide you with real proof that actually happened yesterday before I filmed this video, right? So after I'm done teaching you, I'm gonna actually show this to you. Now I wanted to say before I really get started, this is going to be a very, like I said, controversial video. And I still think if you don't think what I'm about to teach or you think, you know, morally what I'm about to say here or that you should never break up a relationship or anything like that is wrong, I still think you should watch because I'm not in the business of helping you break someone up. That's not what I'm about. What I'm about is helping you position yourself in a way that will almost force your ex to have to choose between you or the other woman or other man and have them land on you. And we do this by actually prying onto some insecurities, and that is where the controversy begins. Now, with that being said, before you flame me in the comments, I do want to say I still think you should watch this from beginning to end because I'm actually, in addition to the real proof, I'm going to show you that this works, and it works <laughs> up to date as far as I know yesterday. Uh, I'm actually going to provide you with scientific evidence that what I'm about to say has been proven and works. So what is this illustrious strategy? How can you hopefully put an end to this rebound relationship your ex is in and have them choose you? It's something I headlined calling the being there method. Now, the being there method is something relatively new. We started talking about it in our Facebook group, our private support group, about, oh, I want to say, a year and a half ago. It was an idea that we came up with actually by working through with multiple people and seeing actually by chance and by luck, what worked for someone whose ex had moved on to another woman. And the being there method is pretty simple. You're simply going to be there. You're going to be a constant presence throughout you and your ex's rebound throughout their relationship, right? You're essentially friend zoning yourself, as weird as that sounds. You're never going to step over any lines. You're never going to actively try to get them to cheat. You may flirt every once in a while, but harmless flirting. The idea here is that you are indirectly intimidating the other person, right? And now there is scientific evidence that this actually works. This is a snippet I actually screenshotted from a Psychology Today article, right? So the Psychology Today article was really studying people who actually stayed in contact with their exes and what that did to their current relationship. So let me just read Read it for you right here, right now. What implications does this have for people's current relationships? In general, those who stayed in touch with their ex tended to be less committed to their current partner than those who did not. But contact with an ex wasn't associated with how satisfying they found their current relationship. Interesting. Now, that part I would actually disagree with. From my own findings, I find actually the second statement they're about to say here the second study they're about to quote here is a little bit more in line with my own personal findings through working with thousands of individuals. In a second study, the researchers further explored how contact with exes related to the quality of their current relationship by examining people's reasons for staying in touch with exes. They surveyed 169 undergraduate students in relationships who said they communicated with an ex at least once every couple of months. 
This time, the team found a link between contact with the exes and the quality of the current relationship. The more frequent the contact with an ex, the less satisfied participants were with their current relationship. Now, that's interesting. Scientific proof saying that the more your ex stays in contact with you, the your his ex or her ex, the less satisfied they're going to be with their ultimate relationships. And I think it's also really interesting when you look at the 169 students that they surveyed. They said that they communicate with an ex at least once every couple of months. What I'm suggesting here with the being there method is basically putting that on steroids, trying to get in contact almost every day or every other day where it's basically natural to stay in contact with your ex. Now, what you also want to be doing during this time is actually cultivating a perfect image, right? You want to be everything that the rebound is not. So this is kind of if this strategy works in a perfect world. And again, we do not live in a perfect world, so don't expect this to work right out of the gate. But let's pretend just for argument's sake that everything's working perfectly. You are being there. You're a constant presence. You're basically friends with your ex and the new girl or guy is not cool with that at all. They hate it. The insecurity shows. They get into fights. They get into arguments. They're basically becoming a worse version of themselves. They're not sort of trying to find ways to fight or argue or, or um, potentially make you, your ex stop being friends with you. They're just imploding. Well, while that's going on, you need to be the opposite. You need to be the perfect image. Cultivate an image that you know for a fact your ex is attracted to and basically become it or at least be perceived as it. Now, what do I mean by be perceived as it? Well, I mean, look at your social media profile. Post things on there so that your ex, when looking from afar or the new girl or guy from looking from afar can become even more intimidated. You want to be the person... You want to be basically the perfect version of yourself or strive to be the perfect version of yourself. And this would be kind of a weird reference, but samurais are perfect examples of how to do this. A samurai lived their life for perfection. They understood that perfection was impossible. Nevertheless, they tried every day to becoming the more perfect versions of themselves time and time again. Well, I want you to take that mentality and pull it or push it towards the image You want every day to work towards becoming the perfect image. You want to cultivate that image so that your ex remembers good experiences from when you were together or they start comparing because no doubt about it, there is a comparison that's going to go on between the new girl or guy and you. And you want to rank higher than that person. Now let's move on. I want to show you real proof that this works and I want to show you show you actually a snippet that happened in our private support group. I've obviously had to um, block out some names for privacy's purpose, but I, I, I think this is a perfect example of what happens if you're doing the being there method properly. So what is this awesome real life proof? Well, here I want to show you. Let me give you some context here. This is actually a text message string that happened yesterday at 9.38 p.m. And the context was that this woman was, uh, you know, talking to her ex and uh, they kind of ended a conversation, as you can see up there in the blue. Uh, I think she ended the conversation. And um, the interesting thing is that um, a couple of hours later, her ex sent her this message. And this message was not meant for her. It was actually meant for one of his friends. I just got into another argument about blank, which is the person who's in our private Facebook group about something I thought was already discussed, but nope. Now she is crying and I'm a sarcastic asshole and I don't let her have opinions and I don't care about anything ever. Now, this is a perfect example of someone imploding, right? This is the being their method working. So what we have here is a an X, a boy X, a male who is getting into a fight with his current rebound relationship over his ex, who is my client. And just by her doing the being there method, she's not stepping over any lines. She's just simply talking. The woman's imploding. She's starting fights and 
crying and calling him a sarcastic asshole and I don't let her have a and she apparently doesn't have any opinions and he doesn't care about her and he's getting fed up. Now this is a perfect example of what you want to have happen. If your ex starts if your ex's rebound starts acting this way, you're presenting him with a choice whether he or she realizes it or not. And now this works perfectly in tandem with that cultivating the perfect image. Because if you're the definition of the opposite of what she is, he's going to or she's going to be naturally drawn to you. And that is how you can destroy your ex's rebound relationship.